what could cause the real estate market to crash in Boise, Idaho in 2018. Is that even possible? I mean, currently all signs are looking good, right? Let's have a look. Well, the supplies of homes is in historic lows. Look how the past bubble, the supply of homes was all in the red zone. Way too much inventory on the market. Most recent years, it's really low, historically low. So that looks good. What about the demand for homes? Yep, it's at historic highs, which is good for any real estate economy. Look at before how it was feverishly high, fanatically high, and now it's just been growing steadily over the last number of years, and it's at historic highs for the area. Population is up, way up, 36% from 2002. Wow, very similar to other growing cities like Austin and Raleigh, North Carolina. Population is up 120% in the past 30 years. So the area is growing, which is fueling the real estate market. And population growth always helps a real estate market. Employees in the workforce is up 55% since 2002. So there's way more people working. Personal income is up 38% from 2002. Even though it's not incredibly high, it's certainly um, well over the national average and getting better. What about unemployment? That's at historic lows too. We've come way down from where we were uh, you know, 10 years ago. So that's looking very healthy at the moment. So if all signs are looking good, what could derail our real estate market? Could home prices be increasingly too rapidly? Hmm, that's a good question. Let's look into it. Here's a chart that goes back to 1979 all the way to today on home prices in Boise. You can see from like the mid 80s through to the early 2000s, it had this nice steady growth. Not a lot of hiccups. You're not seeing any market corrections Corrections for the most part. It's just a steady growing city that's in semi-healthy condition, right? So it's growing. Then we went crazy. Then we crashed and then we recovered. But is this recovery too strong, too fast? Well, many would argue yes. Let's have a closer look. Price increases have slowed down. So that is, look at this right here. They slowed down in recent years. It was very crazy for a while here. During the, we, we crashed, and then we really recovered fast. And then now, in the last couple of years, since like 2015, it's kind of stabilized. I mean, it's increasing, which is great for homeowners, but it's not quite as feverish in its price increases. So that's, that's a healthy sign. So it doesn't appear price increases being a major problem at the moment. Well, what led to the last market crash? Of course, we all know many things like crazy financing, and, you know, the list is very large. But a huge issue in Boise was too much supply, which I, I mentioned before. Supply went way up. And you can see how eventually that created a tipping point. Demand actually slowed down in 2006, and uh, so the price began to fall. But supply was really high, and then eventually, slam. That's when the foreclosures hit. People walked away from the homes. It really crashed. Then, in 2011, it, you know, the market started to recover because the supply had gotten low enough where all of a sudden supply got so low, it triggered price increases because all of a sudden demand for those homes outweighed the supply and bump, there it goes, there goes the price. And that's been the case for a number of years now and it's still incredibly low. So the bubble last time, the crash last time looks way different from now. Even though prices have exceeded where they were before, we don't have an oversupply issue. So supply is not the same you know, issue as it is today. And therefore, you know, if we have a market crash, it's not necessarily gonna be for the same reasons, at least not yet. So if supply and demand are healthy, what else could cause a market to crash? Hmm, let's think about that. What about war, a debt crisis, a stock market crash, political unrest, interest rates, and a whole bunch of other possibilities. Because, you know, just because you know, that everything's looking good doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Let's have a look at some of these issues like debt to GT gross to net product ratio. You can see in the 70s, you know, things were fairly fine. And then we took on some debt in the 80s, the 90s, it kind of stabilized and went down or the 2000s it was fine. All of a sudden, you know, we had our, our crash, our kind of crash. And so the government kind of bailed us out, bailed out the banks, and spent a lot of money. Here's all this debt, right? So, wow, is this going to come back to you know, crash our economy? I don't know, but it doesn't look good. How about 
the stock market. Well, let's look at over history. Here's the S&P 500 index. You can see in the 80s and 90s, it's kind of grown steadily with a couple little corrections here and then spike, crash, spike, crash, spike. Where's the crash? Maybe it's coming. Maybe it's next month. Maybe it's next year. You know, who knows if it's going to be a little one or a big one. So that is something to watch out. And the stock market crash, when people are losing money in the stock market, has a tendency to maybe impact a real estate market. Just saying. How about interest rates? Well, they've been very nice the last you know number of years. Almost really the last five, six, seven years, we've really enjoyed a very low uh, sub 5%, sub 4% interest rate. If you look at over history, it really is common to be more around the 5 to 10%. Right? Look at this. This is much more normal. Of course, it can get really bad and, you know, and sometimes, but is it really going to stay this low forever? Chances are, based on historical performance, no. So what would that do to the real estate market? The point is that many things can derail a housing market, no matter how solid it's currently looking. But what does this mean for you? Well, all local indicators clearly show that the Boise housing market is solid and likely to continue to improve. That's what all the data shows. I mean, the key highlights are supply of homes, historic lows, demand, historic highs, population growing through, growing like crazy, and that doesn't seem to be slowing down. Employees or more employees are working. Unemployment really low. Personal income is up. Home price increases have stabilized. Stabilized. However, to believe that nothing can stop it from crashing is wishful thinking. Someone really wise once said, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. It's not always a good time to buy and sell. Just saying. Therefore, try to make a good decision based on the facts you have in front of you today, not based on what might happen in the future. For example, if you have a house, it's got some equity in it, and you're thinking about capitalizing on that equity, great. Maybe that's a good time for you to do that. However, you know, I, if you're, if you're going to hold out and wait for more equity in the future, that might pan out for you, but it might not. And that's okay. You just have to know what your risks are. And there is risk because markets don't tend to stay the same forever. So make your decisions based on the facts you have today. We can't control nor predict the future as much as we try. And believe me, I've been trying. So choose wisely now. If you have questions about any of this stuff, leave you know, write me back or leave comments below. I'm Mike Turner, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about decisions you need to make today.